What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an inexpensive small form factor gaming PC using one of my new favorite combos that I've come across. This thing has handled any newer AAA game at 1080 that I've thrown at it, and also runs older stuff at 1440. And in order to get this all together in a small form factor, what we've got here is something we've seen in the past. This is an Optiplex 760. They are a dime a dozen over on eBay. You can pick them up for as low as $74 with RAM and storage. But one of the main issues that we've had in the past is finding a GPU that fits this form factor. Dell knew exactly what they were doing when they set this thing up. If you take a look down here, our PCIe slot is so close to that power supply. And in the past, I've actually replaced this power supply with something a bit smaller. We've also used a low profile single slot card like an RX 6400, but recently I came across one of my new favorite low profile single slot cards. This is the Yestin RTX 3050 with 6 gigs of VRAM. And yes, it comes just like this single slot, low profile, and it fits in these Optiplexes perfectly. Recently on the channel, we tested this card with a much more powerful 13th gen i9 small form factor build, and performance with 1080p gaming is great given the form factor of this card but it's not a super high-end, top-of-the-line card that's going to run everything at 4K. This is a 1080p card for newer AAA games with a little bit of DLSS, and for older stuff, you can run those games at 1440. But the question is, what if we pair this card up with a $100 used Office PC like this Optiplex 760? There's a lot of different versions of these PCs out there with i3s, i5s, i7s, you could even go with an HP or a Lenovo variant of their small form factor office PCs, but when getting one of these, I would highly recommend getting at least an 8th gen Intel i7. So what I've got here is the Intel i7-8700. It's a non-K variant that came in this unit. It's got 6 cores, 12 threads. It will boost up to 4.6. This one here came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it is DDR4, given the age of the unit. It didn't come with an M.2 SSD, but there is a spot for one. And I've just added a one terabyte drive here. And again, looking at that PCIe slot, you're going to need a low profile single slot card. And that's where this Yestin RTX 3050 comes in. These are $200 over on Amazon, but I have seen them for around $180 on AliExpress. I'll leave links in the description. And of course, for an RTX 3050 with six gigs of VRAM, it is quite a lot to spend. But at the time of making this video, it's the best performing low profile single slot card at this price point right now. There are more powerful single slot low profiles on the market, but you're going to spend upwards of $300 to $1,100 depending on what you're going to pick up. And for an older office PC like this, it really doesn't make sense. Again, I've tested the RX 6400 and I personally love that card, especially for Linux. But this RTX 3050 does give us a lot more power for the small form factor unit. And we've got two extra gigabytes of RAM, which really helps out with those newer AAA games. Another thing I would recommend here with these older Office PCs is as soon as you get them, pull the heatsink off of that CPU, clean it up, add some new thermal paste because these may have been running for years without that thermal paste being changed, and it can lower that CPU temp for us. It's not going to be the prettiest small form factor machine that you can put together, but I'm really surprised by the performance here, and I did want to show you a couple tweaks that I do inside of Windows with these, so let's go ahead and move over there now. Okay, jumping right in here, like I mentioned, we've got Windows 11 installed on this machine. We've got that i7-8700, just six cores, 12 threads, not a super powerful chip, and it's definitely getting a bit dated. 16 gigs of DDR4 at 2400, and if I'm not mistaken, this will do 2666, but this is what I have here, 16 gigs running in dual channel. And of course, we've got that low profile RTX 3050 with six gigs of VRAM. When it comes to TDP with this i7-8700, out of the box, this will run it up to around 65 watts. So from CPU-Z here, if I run a stress test, zoom in just a bit, you see it jumps up. About 64, comes on down to around 60. There is more that we can get out of this, but given that we've got that stock Optiplex or stock Dell cooler here, it's not going to do very well at those higher wattages, but I'd still like to show you here because with that higher TDP, we can get those higher clocks. And personally, I use x86 tuning utility from custom, power limit, and I'm just gonna go up to a little over 100. We'll go to 105, apply that. And now when we stress this out, 
you'll see it does jump up to close to 100 watts here, but it gets pretty hot and this thing can get loud with that stock Optiplex cooler. Personally, I've still been using x86 tuning utility. I've just been locking it down at around 68 watts, but just to kind of give you an idea there, yeah, I mean, you can go higher with it if you really wanted to. And the final thing I wanted to talk about here was the low profile RTX 3050's TGP. So this is running at the stock clocks right now. It does jump up to around 70 watts. So we can get the maximum performance out of this RTX 3050. But another thing to keep in mind is this is the six gig version. Now I will tell you, for a small form factor unit like this, I do think that this is a really good card. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at here were some benchmarks. Here's Geekbench 6, and when it comes to CPU performance out of this 8700, on that single core, we're only at 1,498, and Multi really isn't looking much better when compared to newer chips, 5,902. And just to put this into perspective for you, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, 6 cores, 12 threads, it's a $100 chip right now, I think it's like 104 over on Amazon, single core, 2,114. Multi over 8,000, so it's definitely beaten it out, but if you wanted to put a system together using that 5600X, you're going to have to get that motherboard, case, power supply. With this, we've already got the RAM, power supply, case, and CPU installed for around 130 over on eBay. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 35,913, and the final one I ran here was Time Spy. We hit 5,165, so these aren't super high scores when it comes to synthetics, but what this thing's about is cheap 1080p gaming and even 1440p gaming with older stuff. So let's move over there now and test out some games on this machine. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 1080p medium with DLSS set to balance. It's not bad, but with this RTX 3050, you'll see it dip under 60 with these settings, Taking it down to low or using DLSS set to performance will alleviate any of that, but there's another way around this, and with this method here, we can get a much higher frame rate, and we don't need to use any kind of frame scaling, so we can run it at 100% resolution scale. And that's FSR Frame Gen. Here it is at 1080p, medium, with FSR 3 Frame Gen on, no scaling, and we're getting over 100 FPS with this game. It's got a much clearer picture because we don't have to scale this thing down. And for me, with a lower end system like this, a lower cost system with an RTX 3050, I'm actually glad we do have this. I'm personally not a Fortnite player, but I still wanted to see how it would handle it. And right now we're at 1080 high with DLSS set to balanced. I was hoping I could go in this at epic settings, but unfortunately we had a lot of dips. And right now it still looks like some of those shaders are caching. That's one thing I've really noticed with this game when testing it out with lower end GPUs. Just starting out there, you'll get a lot of hiccups until everything kind of caches. Black Myth Wukong, just using the built-in benchmark, 1080p, medium, and with this, using an RTX 3050, we need a little bit of resolution scale, I've set it to 70, and FSR frame gen is really going to help out. With it set up like this, we had an average of 70 FPS. Skyrim, special edition, 1440p, high, and I really thought that I'd be able to go in here at ultra settings, but we were seeing an average of around 56 FPS with it set up like that, so I just took it on down, still looks great. Personally, I'd rather play the OG version, but that's just me, and with that version, we can max it out at 1440 ultra.
wonder if I can get in there without alerting all those soldiers. And finally, we've got God of War Ragnarok 1080p, medium, frame gen on. This is one of my favorite PlayStation ports over to PC. I think they've done a stellar job with this one. Uh, we could go up to high with it and still run this at about 72 FPS on average with the same settings here using frame gen. Low, DLSS set to performance, you can get up to around 68. But having that frame gen on with this RTX 3050, in my opinion, is the way to go. Just to get that much higher frame rate out of it. Overall, really impressed with the performance this old Office PC is putting out with that RTX 3050. And I know some people out there might think it's a bit high priced for that thing. And yeah, it really is. I mean, when you take a look at RTX 3050s, you know, full size, this is on the higher price side. But like I mentioned, if you're trying to go small form factor, at this price point of $200, this is the best low profile single slot card that you can get right now. If you spend a lot more, you can get something that's going to perform better than this. You could also spend less and get something that doesn't have quite this performance, but in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. If you're building a small form factor PC and you're looking for that low profile single slot, this is one that I can highly recommend. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave links in the description to everything I used. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this rig, just let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.